Hi everyone. Today is Friday, March 5th, and it's about 2.30 in the afternoon, and it's about minus one, but there is a wind chill for sure. And it is a beautiful, actually clear sky, blue sky day today. And we are at Dovercourt Road and College Street. Today's walk is, we're doing a perimeter walk of the neighborhood, or sorry, in the neighborhood of Trinity Bellwoods. So I'm not terribly familiar with this neighborhood in the inner city of Toronto, but it's a very trendy, hot neighborhood. Um, there's a lot to do and see here. And it is a wanted area for, for people to live in. It's, it's very trendy, very kind of a cool area. And it is, it um, has a lot to offer. Um, there's a lot of uh, old homes. There's a lot of the uh, shops in the neighborhood or, uh, you know, in the original buildings of what was built way back in the day. Um, but we're going to explore this neighborhood together. So I'm just fumbling with my glove here, sorry. Not doing a very good job. Okay, there we go, sorry about that. Um, so we're doing a perimeter walk. So the, um, we started at, and we're gonna end up at the same, pretty much the same spot. So it, uh, it starts at Dovercourt Road on the west. And so that's where we are right now. And then we are walking south um, on, to Queen. And then the north side is uh, College Street. So that's sort of where we started. And then uh, the east side is Bathurst. So we're going to explore this together, this neighborhood. Now, there is a beautiful park here, Trinity Bellwoods Park. Uh, it's, it's really a hot spot as well. People love to come down here. It's, it's part of the cycling routes, a couple of cycling routes in the city. It is nice down here. So I've never been on this street before. Well, Dover Court actually, uh, that's not true. I have been on Dover Court. I'm not sure I have been um, this far down on Dover Court. But as you can see, it's pretty residential. Here's a police station. Some Pretty cool housing here. So there's uh, great restaurants here as well in uh, the Trinity Bellwoods neighborhood. It's shops and it's the real like, you know, coffee shop scene as well, restaurants. So this is Division 14 Police uh, Services location. Yeah, it's a really nice day. I'm going to angle the camera up so you can see the beautiful blue sky, like no clouds. It feels more like um, like minus six because that wind chill but I'm not complaining it is March after all so there looks like there's some upgrading going on here well this must be a new build and they're just doing the landscaping portion. 
Yeah, the windows still have stickers on them, like manufacturing stickers on them. Some of them. Looks like some people are living in there already. Yeah, it's cool walking down here. I've never been down here. That's really neat. Big down here. Yeah, I'm not sure if you can see way beyond there. Like up in the skyline, sorry. Let me angle the camera better. Like in the far distance, if you look at the skyline, I think that's downtown. It looks like the Scotiabank building. Downtown. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is actually. I love doing these um, these neighborhood walks because uh, not since I started filming my videos did I really start branching out of my usual walks to you know neighborhoods that I don't ever come to really I mean we have cycled through here and I think we've been down here like, for dinner or something but um, yeah it's not a neighborhood I really know much about other than that it's got that beautiful big park and we will walk to the gates of that park Tony Bellwoods Park so here we are up at Dundas this is so Dundas is a major thoroughfare east-west through the city of Toronto so we're going to continue south walking down Dover Court Road let's make this walk so again I don't know if you can see in the skyline that's downtown Toronto for sure Here we are, looking west. And that's looking east. And we're going south. So Dover Court, um, I thought was maybe a little busier than it is. It's, I guess, I don't, I'm not sure what I expected, but um, it is, so far it's been pretty residential. have to cross over to the east side of the street because uh, there's a sign saying to do so. I try to avoid walking in the sun when I can. It's blinding. Today I remember to put my sunglasses on. So I did uh, drive here from home. I drove to uh, Dover Court and College and just parked down a side street. not to walk down or take the car down somewhere in here at a park would not be good sorry I'm just messing a little bit with the camera here hang on
Sorry, folks. Sorry. Oh, isn't that cute? That place. I just love the paint and that that buried leaf on the front door. It just looks so well kept and maintained. So these are like original houses from gosh, they're row houses from when? Probably the 20s? Or that might be a little too early. corner store like a neighborhood corner store uh, in one of my other videos I mentioned we walked by a corner store and um, it was all boarded up I'm wondering if it was because of COVID or is it because corner stores are not that popular or at least neighborhood corner stores aren't that popular anymore I wonder Yeah, it looks like this whole west side of the street, pretty much from since we started, has been, uh, it's under construction. Like city construction. building. I'm going to angle the camera. I like this old building. It's like an apartment building. But then there's um, ground floor apartments. Sorry about that folks. Okay. a bike path. Oh, this used to also be a, a corner conven corner store, con convenience store. But look at that, look at that apartment building. It's something that cool. I think it's condos, I bet. Yeah, it's that nice. It's probably condos. do enjoy, appreciate, enjoy looking at um, what I consider to be cool architecture. Again, here's some more row housing. Maybe it was more the 30s, like wartime housing. enjoy this. I hope you are too, exploring this neighborhood alongside me. Yeah, it's pretty, um, pretty close to downtown. Pretty close to Bloor Street, just off of College. It's a well-situated neighborhood. I understand why it's in such high demand. It's pricey to buy in this neighborhood. This looks like a complete rebuild here. So it looks like there were six apartments here. There's buzzards, one to six labeled just on the outside, but it's all fenced off as you can see. So uh, it's already, looks like they've already started to tear it down. So 
So a couple of videos ago, I mentioned that um, my husband uh, got us four fully loaded cinnamon buns. Um, and that was, oh, I think that was Sunday. Yeah, that was Sunday. Yeah, so. Yeah, anyhow, the last of it was finished off today. So I must say, um, cinnamon buns aren't something you really can keep around for too long, at least in my opinion. Um, the important thing to do, of course, is to you know, microwave them for 30 seconds, and then they sort of spring back to life. But then all the icing gets all melty and funny. But anyhow, we're not having having uh, that for a while, that's for sure. I feel like I've OD'd on sugar. Okay, where are we here? Queen, okay, we're at Queen. So this is the southmost perimeter of Trinity Bell Woods, Queen Street. Started at college. Walk south on Davenport to Queen. Let's just make sure I've got all my facts right here. And then we are walking uh, east to Bathurst. So this is, I guess, part of that construction that's going on uh, that we were watching here, or that we um, that we saw as we were walking down. Looks like it's all part and parcel of the same construction project. So some cool shops here. So right ahead of us, uh, the direction that I'm pointing in, there's the CAMH building. It's Crisis and Critical Care building. Um, this is a hospital for mental health, addiction and mental health. So these storefronts this storefront, at least, is, is closed off, ordered off, I guess. It's uh, no, not in business. This one, too. So this was, uh, what was this? This was a takeout restaurant. Peruvian Canadian food and seafood. That's sad. I hope, really hope, it has nothing to do with COVID. And it was a owner decision to relax and retire that would be the ideal way to go so this is pretty cool here yeah, i've not been here I'm really liking this so here's more of cam h on their front windows, shop online. I do see a lot of that. Now here's a corner, or part of a, I don't know if it's the whole building or just the corner, it's boarded up. You can see, angle that up. I don't know what that was. The boards look like they are fairly new, like they don't look all gungy from weathering. Yeah, so it's, I guess it's 
just the corner part here, but this looks like it's um, still occupied. That's good. That's good. a really cool store it's called gravity Pope it is a bit spendy but they have some they have some really cool clothes and shoes yeah it's really it's really a cool place to shop oh this was a Starbucks it's now closed it says that it was permanently closed as of February 1st. And this is a really trendy street as well, Ossington Avenue. We're right on Ossington Avenue. So going north on Ossington, a lot of, uh, again, cool shops and uh, restaurants. I know Ossington, I come down here quite a bit, just like the little shops that are down here. Take a walk down here in one of my future videos. I'm not sure what the um, what the um, what am I trying to say here? What the step count even, or how what the what this perimeter walk, how long it is as far as kilometers? I didn't bother scoping that out because I don't really care. I just like to go out and see what happens. I make the commitment to go and I hope to always conclude my commitment. However, normally I am familiar with, the, with uh, how long something might take me because I'm they're usually walks I've done in the past, but this is a new walk. So I don't know how long it's gonna take, but it really doesn't matter. It's such a beautiful afternoon. Oh, this looks like a cute shop. Now, isn't that interesting? I don't know, I'll get, try and get a little bit closer. Just up ahead here, there is a brick wall. We're coming up to Shaw Street. And just across the street where I'm angling, there's a brick wall there. Now I wonder what that's all about. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna cross the street because there, it looks like there's some signage there that might actually speak to that wall. Memorial wall plaques dedicated to patient laborers. These patient built walls are a testament to the abilities of the people whose unpaid labor was central to the operation of asylums in the province of Ontario during the 19th and 20th centuries. The asylum on Queen Street first opened in 1850 and was overcrowded within a few years. The initial idea of work as therapy gave way to the reality of work intended to save the provincial government money through unpaid patient labor. 
Men worked outdoors on construction, maintenance, and farm work, including building and repairing many of the structures behind which they were confined, including the still existing boundary walls on the south side of this property built in 1860, and the east-west boundaries of the walls built in 1888 to 89. Women worked primarily inside doing the sewing, knitting, and laundry for the asylum, while also working as domestic servants in both the nurses and doctors' residence not far from this spot. Both women, both men and women worked in their own sex-segregated wards doing domestic chores such as cleaning, washing, and scrubbing floors. Patients also worked in the male west side and the female east side infirmaries, where they helped to care for those of their fellow patients who were sick and dying, seen by many as the physical representation of prejudice towards attitudes towards people with a psychiatric diagnosis. The walls, which still stand today, are historical monuments to the exploited labor of all psychiatric patients who lived, worked, and died on these grounds since 1850. This is presented by the Psychiatric Survivors Archive of Toronto, the Centre for Addiction and Mental Health, Friends of Camp H Archives, and many other donors. Well, let's look at this a little closer. of the times. Thanks. Thank goodness that humans have evolved. So we're looking south on Shaw Street. That's looking north. We're gonna walk on the north side of Queen Street just to get in some of the sun because um, the sun's to my back so I'm not gonna feel it hitting me in the face but at least it'll add some heat. So just a bit crispy with regard to the uh, coldness of the um sorry folks I think my camera it did just go off I don't know why oh look at the dog oh hi puppy hi monkey hi you're so gorgeous like a neat shop. Oh, here are the candy factory lofts. Let me just show you what they look like. I love the size of these windows. So this obviously was a manufacturing facility once upon a time. That, oops, that made, what made one of my favorite food consumptions, if you call it a food, candy. Candy should be part of the uh, Canadian food guide, as far as I'm concerned. I love those windows. Those are, that's a neat building, really neat building. Sorry, the camera this was going a bit wonky. I remember when I was younger, I thought, oh, it would be so cool to live in a loft. 
but I think loft is just sort of one big space for walls. I mean, that still would be pretty cool, I think. Um, but uh, I think, I don't know how, much, how well that would accommodate a family. A loft. The way I look at a loft is just four walls and maybe a bathroom and everything else is open concept. Oh, and here's another one. These are the chocolate company lofts. See the sign above the main door there, chocolate company lofts. I like the look of the other building more. here down here curbside pickup of law so the labo ink manufacturers manufactures a fine perfumery so I know that um, I know I know that brand I think I've had something some body lotion or something from that that brand really nice so here we're coming up to Trinity Bellwoods Park Wow, look at, there's a lot of tents here. Homeless sites. You know, my worry is that when it really dips deep in a below zero temperatures, about these people that are on the street and living in tents and how they keep warm. So this is uh, also the park I was mentioning earlier. Uh, bike path comes through here. It's a big, big park. Um, and it's just, it's, it's, it is beautiful. It's really, it's kind of got everything in here that you need for recreation. Oh, my goodness. Oh, he's just a young, young guy. Look at how cute. These are the gates of the park. Oops. And that's the entry, main entry into the park. Oh, look at how cute he is. He's adorable! Oh my goodness, he was a bit cool. He's shaking a bit, but that could just be nerves with all the you know, noises and stuff. It's always good to take dogs out and expose them to the loud sounds when they're young so they don't get spooked. They get used to it early. So there's tennis courts there. I know there's baseball diamond. A lot going on in this neighborhood. Yeah, and this coffee shop across the street, right on the corner where it says coffee shop, uh, that looks like it's open. I think I've been there once. But these places, some of these places look like they're shut. I see the attraction, really see the attraction of being being down here and living down here. Oh, look at the nice windows on this. I'm not sure if they're apartments or if they're condos. Oops. Really nice. Nice, nice, nice.
So we're still on Queen Street, walking on the north side, heading east. We're gonna go as uh, far east as Bathurst because that is the most east end of um, Trinity Bellwood's neighborhood. There's a 7-Eleven. I, uh, when I lived in Calgary, not much when I, since I've been in Toronto, but when I lived in Calgary, I grew up on Slurpees. And my brother and I would often, my, young, my younger brother and I would often go out and get Slurpees. Probably every other day, sometimes every day. Totally, totally loved them. And it was usually Coke that I would get, the Coke flavor. And uh, every once in a while they'd have root beer and I would be so thrilled when they got the root beer flavor. And, uh, but it happens so infrequently. And I remember asking, how come you hardly ever get root beer? It's always Coke and Orange Crush. And the fellow said that um, it's because the, the intensity of the root beer flavor somehow lingers in the machine. So when they put in a different flavor, um, it takes a long time for that root beer, I'm not, I'm not sure if it's the smell or the flavor, um, it takes a long time for it to sort of work its way out of the pipes, I guess. and whatever flavor they have in there, it takes on that part of that root beer flavor. So I can, I get it, but, uh, but I still, uh, you know, it still didn't satisfy my needs and my wants. I wanted root beer all the time. Now, since I've been in Toronto, well, that's a cool shop. Since being in Toronto, I think I probably had a Slurpee, oh, maybe in 32 years. Maybe five times. show you and the bus is in the way. Many of these buildings are low rises. They are low rise and so that would have been gosh what the 20s probably or whatever. But you can see the neighborhood has retained the charm of these older buildings. And considering this is such a trendy, well, it's more than a trendy area. It's a very desired area to be living here. And uh, when you have low rise buildings, so um, you can't accommodate as much commerce or as many residents so as that the city tends to be leaning towards these days. So even with new builds, the main floor is often commercial and then you know there's 40 stories of um, residential units so I wonder how long these will stay I'm sure some of them would be considered heritage buildings but they are very charming <laughs> you know, I really am sort of kicking myself that I've never 
spent more time down here. Exploring. Because there are some really, um, some really nice stores here that I, you know, are not franchised. They're they're independently owned, and these are people you want to support. I mean, there's a place for everything. Be nice to share, you know, spread whatever spending money you have around. You know, all of suppliers. That's nice. That is really neat. So, my, my niece, Celeste, comes to visit, except she couldn't this past year because of you know what. And um, we normally go we out and shop and we walk to our destinations and this is going to be a destination that I need to bring her to oh this is a wool shop a yarn shop oh Romney wools yes yeah my friend uh, Catherine told me about this yarn shop I have attempted to do some knitting. Um, still need to practice that attempt. I'm not very good. I'm not too worried about the tension. I think I do okay with the tension, but sometimes I will drop a stitch or miss a stitch or whatever, and then, then there's a big hole. And I don't always notice it, even when I'm trying to pay attention. I guess everything comes with practice, right? Everything comes with practice. Be patient. Oh, this is really fun down here. Now, I can only imagine what it would be like in the summer, a normal summer, when everything is opened and people can freely enter shops and restaurants and coffee shops and just come down and whether you're shopping or window shopping, just enjoy the neighborhood and grab a coffee or a cold drink or whatever. Yeah, that's something I look forward to doing again. And not that I did it that often, but um, it's, you know, when you realize that you can't do something, suddenly you have a desire to do it again. At least I do. Fresh market. That's, this is interesting. Oh, that looks really nice. Really yummy. Oh dear. Something is going on up here. Somebody is upset. I hear a lot of yelling. Okay, is this, this is I think where I need to go. This is the most east side, I think. Yep. Yeah, this is the most east side of the um, Trinity Bellwoods per perimeter walk. So we're gonna go north. So this is uh, Queen Street and Bathurst, so we're looking south on Bathurst. 
Now we're gonna head up north. North on Bathurst. So there are uh, museums here. I know there's one called, I think, MOCA, Museum of Contemporary Art. Can Canadian Contemporary Art. Yeah, it's a Canadian uh, art gallery. I'm not sure where that's located. We are just doing a perimeter walk. Now, it could have been on Queen. South on Bathurst. I'm sure I have by car. So Bathurst is also another busy thoroughfare north and south. So I have um, I've already told, I haven't let it be known yet that I'm doing these videos at this point in time. And uh, so I've let two of my nieces know that my videos have actually been posted and up for general consumption, general viewing. And my niece Colleen wrote me the other day and she said, well, you know, I'm looked at your videos. What are you going to post more? So I told her that more were going to be posted this weekend. And so she wrote me again this morning and she said, yay, more videos are up. And I'm just so happy. It just makes my heart melt that she is happy to watch my videos because she's 30 and I wouldn't necessarily expect that demographic to be that interested in watching walking videos. Um, but it could be just because I'm her auntie. But whatever her reason, I am very grateful that she's watching my videos. So Colleen, when you're watching, I hope you have a great weekend and know that I love you. So one big reason that I've read that tents for the homeless are that much more popular is because of COVID. Concern about being in overcrowded shelters or shelters of any kind just because, you know, they need to get in as many people as possible and uh, protect them from the elements. and. Uh, you can't, they only can uh, do so much with the COVID. So I, if you see here, there's another park. This is Alexandra Park. That is that is uh, housing some 
uh, tents for the homeless. There's a, looks like a little community center there and an outdoor skating rink just across the way. Yeah, it's a cold day to be skating. It's cold enough for the ice to remain frozen. So there looks like two skating rinks there. There's a, like a unfenced skating rink and that would be for, for just free skaters. And there's, there's another boarded in rink. Usually that's for organized hockey games but it's the middle of the afternoon so people looks like people it looks like people are still doing leisure skating on both on both ranks that's nice nice to do I haven't been skating in quite some time we went skating a couple years ago um, and I when I put my skates on I and mean, you know got on the ice um, it had been probably at least 10 years since I last skated and talk about rusty. Wow I mean it doesn't take long to get into the swing of things, but boy oh boy I learned how to skate of course as a kid and my brother taught me and the thing was my mother didn't want me to have figure skates because she thought that you know because of the jagged edges the jagged points that uh, you know I would hurt myself anyhow so she um, she got me boy skates so I wore boy skates and my brother my older brother Don taught me how to skate so he taught me how to skate like a boy and not that there's anything wrong with that but I remember because um, he played hockey so way he skated was his you know his feet really splayed out when he was moving forward the way a hockey player skates so that is how he taught me to skate <laughs> so that's how I skated and then um, I think in grade 8 my mom bought me figure skates and she uh, she took the skates to I guess the shoemaker or whatever and they um, grinded down some of the uh, picks on the blade so that uh, it would make it easier because I was not used to um, figure skates and uh, so I think there's like only a few picks remaining on those skates which by the way I still have and uh, so it took a long time to train myself to skate the way I saw other girls skate without swinging their feet out and having a more, uh, I guess, how can I describe it? You know, the way um, most girls skate without um, kicking their legs out. Anyhow, so I was trying to train myself to do that, but when I got going or when I wanted to build up any type of speed, I ended up skating like a boy. You know, the good thing is nowadays, who cares about whether you skate like a boy or a girl? That's a good thing. That is such a good thing. Things don't have to be... And, and the reason why I say that and why it's still in my head is because, you know, girlfriends, girls that I would skate with so would always say you skate like a boy and I used to, it used to make me feel self-conscious but nowadays like who cares about that nobody cares and I don't even think there is a distinction between how you should skate I mean if you want to be a figure skater I'm sure the skill set or the practical exercises are different than, um, you know, if you want to learn to play hockey. But other than that, just to have fun skating 
in the winter weather or any weather, as long as there's an ice rink. Who cares how you skate? So here's the Toronto Western Hospital, just across the street here. Ukrainian Orthodox Cathedral. I am not going to attempt to say the name of that. I don't want to butcher it. I would definitely butcher the pronunciation of that. Oh, it's windy. You know, I have driven down this street, but boy, oh boy, it's not at all the same walking it. I've got a few more, I have a few more videos planned for this week to do and to post. I seem to be averaging about three a week. I seem to be walking about three, uh, three walks a week. In the summer I'll probably, well I'm not sure if I'm going to do more in the summer because I'll probably stick to three for sure. Um, cause I like to also do a little bit of running in the summer and uh, I don't know if I can physically do both without exhausting myself so uh, we'll play it by ear but for sure I'll be walking that's for sure So I was thinking I would do more videos um, when the weather got nicer, but then uh, when the weather gets nicer, I want to run too and also go cycling. And we'll see about mounting the camera on the bike. And taking, uh, doing recordings on the bike. So here we are at college. All right. So we've done, I guess, three fourths of a walk. We are on the east, most east side of the Trinity Bowens Perimeter Walk on College and Bathurst. So once we get up to the corner here at College, we'll be turning west. So I'm going to go left. So unfamiliar to me. Why is it so unfamiliar? College Bathurst. Yeah. All right, here we go. Walking west.
really cold. It's nice that the uh, the daylight is lasting a little bit longer. I remember having to turn the lights on at four o'clock, and now I'm not turning them on until five thirty. restaurants and coffee shops oh. you can see all the chairs on the tables because there's no insight in-house serving it looked like they were closed College Street is also known as a Little Italy. You can see up here, Promiston Avenue, Little Italy. I also did a walk on college, um, or sorry, I did a walk on college. No, Claire. I went to Little Italy on St. Clair, so most on St. Clair. Um, there's also another, it's called Corsa Italia. It's another uh, Italian community of shops and housing and, you know, residents and uh, a cute place. It's, it's just a cute little neighborhood. It's got Italian bakery and wares, you know, shops that have wares from Italy. College also is known. As it just said, Little Italy, it's also known to have um, the same effect. However, down here in college, um, it's a little bit more popular than the uh, St. Clair location. At, at least I think so. I think it's a little bigger and uh, it's a lot more restaurants. side. So we are at the very north uh, perimeter of Trinity Bellwoods at the Trinity Bellwoods neighborhood. I hope that sun is not blinding. So I don't remember because I've been down here quite. I've been down here quite a bit. I can't remember what was here where this new build is. Oops, sorry, the camera and me aren't getting along. So that new build, I'm not sure what was there before. Probably similar to what's side and on either side. Yeah, we used to come down here a lot with our bikes and with the car and walk around and grab dinner.
Yeah, it's very busy here in the summer on this street, on College Street. Very, very busy. And um, College is also where there used to be an Italian um, like festival. So the street was going to be closed off. And uh, and the restaurants would bring their food tables out to the sidewalk and people would be walking on the street and buying food and whatever else was being sold, other pastries and that kind of thing. Very, very busy. And we came down here one time with Diane and Roland, my cousins, and it was so packed down here, like we couldn't even barely stay together. There was no walking side by side, that's for sure. And uh, it was like it was just so crowded that it wasn't enjoyable, at least for me, it wasn't enjoyable. It was just you know, a sea of people, and you couldn't see kind of, you know, if someone was really tall in front of you, you couldn't really see much. Restaurant right here. It used to be called, uh, maybe it still is, something delicatessen or something. I can't remember what it was called. Uh, not delicatessen. I can't remember. Is there a name? Let's let us check. Yes, this is it. Cafe, Cafe Diplomatico. I think it's known around the city. This this restaurant. We've been here a few times. Yeah, it's, it's inexpensive. It's got a cool atmosphere. I'm not sure if we ever sat inside. I know we sat outside in the summer. And I remember, actually, we sat in this restaurant here, where it's all right here. This used to be an Italian restaurant here. Um, with friends, with my friend Phil, and then we joined him and his friends, and we had just a really a great time. For people that we had just met, we had a wonderful time. Let me see what else is here. Okay, they didn't have an argument, they were too long. Huh. Yeah, there used to be a shop, I think it was, oh, here it is. So, one time, was when David and I were engaged, we came down here for dinner and we parked kind of right here. And I remember, and I said, you know what, here's a jewelry store. We, uh, we need Sorry about that, the camera went off again. Anyhow, so I said, we still get wedding beds. So we walked into this store right here, Royal Crown Jewelry, and got our wedding bands. Spur of the moment. I mean, it was spur of the moment because we just happened to park right in front of that store. And I uh, thought, let's get it done. I already had my engagement ring, but didn't have the bands yet. So I'm glad to see that store is still there. It's been a few years actually since we've been down here. seeing these unique little pieces of jewelry and pottery and just like these little stores very attuned to them we're at Johnny Lombardi Way so we're still on college and this is college in Grace Street now, if I remember correctly, this used to be a restaurant too. Now it's a bank. She's 
So the, a lot of the homes up here, I don't know if you can see them. I don't have a zoom. But if you look where I'm angling, um, that looks like uh, that house right there, that white house with the swans. <laughs> that looks, um, and there's a fountain. So this is Little Italy. So that is sort of a traditional uh, look uh, to what I re remember as uh, how Italians that I knew back in the day would like to decorate their home. Yeah, we've been to this restaurant too. That, I'm, glad to, I'm glad to see that it's still there, right across the street. It looks like it's still operating with curbside pickup. It's very busy in the summer. This place, this street is super busy in the summer. It's just a hot spot because there's so many places to visit and things to buy. And it's a great place for people watching and video recording. <laughs> so here's a cafe. It looks like it's closed up. I always wonder when I see this if it's because it's COVID, COVID related. So when my mom used to come to town uh, to visit, and even when she lived here, we never really came down here much. We always went to Corsa Italia. We didn't come down to Little Italy. Corsa Italian had um, a lot of the shop owners were Italian and they spoke Italian and my mom liked that. I, I don't think um, many of the shop owners here speak Italian. Um, it's a little more trendier down here. How can I describe it? Maybe it's a little bit more trendier down here. Sicilian Sidewalk Cafe. Toronto's Otis Gelateria. Open for takeout, that's good. Being Italian, I do love Italian food. I love it. It doesn't love me, but I love it. This used to be a restaurant as well. It was a really cute restaurant. Now it's going to be a cannabis store. Ah, oh, too bad. It was so Pretty. It was just a really nice, nice restaurant. Oh, that's really too bad. What a shame. So I was saying I do love Italian food. Um, it does, uh, but uh, it doesn't love me. So I eat it in moderation. It's pasta that I'm referring to. I could eat pasta all day, every day. I've never been fond of Italian um, baking though. It's not been, I just never liked it much. Like 
cookies and cakes and the types of things that are known known to be uh, you know Italian sweets just didn't never really appealed to me I don't think they were sweet enough here is Giovanni's Italian kitchen and pizza bar oh, I don't wonder if I because it's been so long since I've been to this neighborhood I don't recognize this restaurant College Shaw Library I'm going to cross the street here so I can see where I'm walking because right now the sun is right in my eyes and I really can't see that well oh that's a relief okay looks like there's a big park down there and this is all bike isn't that cool look at the street wow it's just north south bike lanes so cool so cool oh so that means cars can use it but they have to make way for the bikes that is great 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 So Celeste, if you are watching this video, you and I need to come to this neighborhood, Trinity Bellwoods. Because I know you will love it. So there's a building right here, it's all boarded up. Looks like it's been a, looks like it's been around for a while in this state. It's all kinds of graffiti, and the boards on the windows look old. neighborhood houses down there even it's really like oh really nice really inviting do you have to like living near busy streets but that's you know the thing about Toronto there's a busy street not far away but if you live on a residential street you either don't hear the busy streets or you get so used to that white noise Ossington. If you remember, I pointed out Ossington when we were on the south side of this walk. We were on Queen Street. I mentioned how popular Ossington is. Very popular for restaurants and shops. Of course, it's part of the Trinity Bellwoods neighborhood.
neighborhood. Reminds me a little bit of the Ronchevelles neighborhood. Did a video there, I think, a week or two ago. Really a cool neighborhood. Just really a cool neighborhood. I do love this city. Oh, looks like there's a big hole in the ground here. Look at that big uh, crane. You can see. I'll be a condo. Oh yeah, it's taking up a block. This this build looks really big. And I'll, I'll bet it's condos with uh, commercial on the main floor versus a uh, office building. Yeah, unlikely an office building. Condo, condo. What does it say here? I can't say I've been sort of in this on this section of college. I must have at some point. It just seems so unfamiliar to me. That little Italy part I know pretty pretty well. And Youngman College, I guess through to Little Italy I know pretty well. But west of Little Italy where we are now, coming up to Dover Court and beyond, going west. I'm not familiar with that at all. So here we are coming up to Dover Court. This is where we started, just across the street here. So that was a nice walk. Thank you very much for joining me on this walk. I hope that you enjoyed it. And I hope you consider uh, subscribing to my channel and liking my video and sharing it. That would be fabulous. Anyhow, I look forward to you joining me in my next video. Thanks again. Have a great day.